tonight. Potential tropical cyclone 13 likely to become a hurricane in the Caribbean Sea. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for October 7th. So, of course, we have potential tropical cyclone 13, which is likely to become a tropical storm and potentially a hurricane as it approaches the uh, Central American uh, continent on uh, a code orange event right now. It's been upgraded to, so we're likely to start live coverage during the course of events tomorrow. Here it is on day 129 of Atlantic hurricane season 13L right along the coast of Venezuela and um, we'll be moving through the northern part of Colombia shortly where a tropical storm warning is in effect and the remnants of 12L at depression that's still floating out over the eastern Atlantic. In the Pacific, the eastern Pacific that is, uh, we still have the remnants of x pain still traceable and we've also marked a 10% area uh, not far from uh, the coast of uh, eastern Mexico there uh, which could result from some of the energy from 13L. In the western Pacific we have now marked an area of interest here as well of a 30% chance for another area of interest in the western Pacific which could develop towards the uh, end of the five day period as it approaches the northern Mariana Islands and proceeds on through the Philippine Sea. And in the South Indian Ocean, Tropical Storm 3S is currently active. Uh, so this is another system, a fourth system by my count, uh, that we've had in the early season here, uh, which is a uh, big surprise, I think. All weak storms in the same area, but nonetheless, uh, quite impressive. As is the structure of that potential tropical cyclone down there over the coast of Venezuela. It's uh, blowing up some decent convective tops as you can uh, see there on uh, this imagery. And elsewhere, looking pretty quiet in the Atlantic, you see 12L in the distance. And here in the Eastern Pacific, actually a little bit of convection still being flung up by... Uh, by uh, what's left of pain but elsewhere in the eastern pacific it's looking pretty quiet a few little areas of convection uh, but nothing particularly major let's look at what the storm looks like or the system uh, whatever you want to call it close up a really nice look on some of that uh, deep convection which has been blowing up um, so it's looking quite decent there and has been producing probably a lot of rain for the uh, coastal areas there and around the ABC islands and some gusty winds and squally weather possibly with uh, maybe tropical storm force gusts uh, but that's the current view of it there and in a moment we'll be panning out of it and we can take a look at it on a, a wide scale certainly got a lot to it uh, filling up a large part of the Caribbean Sea and in a moment we'll be looking at what else we've got in the Atlantic, of course what's left of uh, Tropical Depression 12 which is looking very sorry for itself at this point and if we look over to the Eastern Pacific we can still see the uh, remnants of pain which are lingering on um, and don't want to let go as it continues westwards with just that little bit of convection and a low level swirl. Western Pacific right now looks like this and you can see possibly that disturbance that's starting to get itself going and maybe we might see something else form near the Philippines in that next five day period as well or a little bit beyond that. So Western Pacific a little bit on the quiet side for now uh, but it is going to come back fairly soon. Looking at the Indian Ocean and you can see lots of convection blowing up over 3S and a massive trail of clouds on the southeastern side there extending all the way through to Australia. Uh, but the storm itself looking pretty good there. Uh, satellite estimates I think up to 50 miles per hour actually. And in the southern Pacific there, uh, there's a few frontal systems that are still blowing through, particularly for, uh, the, uh, uh, for New Caledonia into Fiji and uh, Tonga but elsewhere pretty devoid of tropical cyclones. Sea surface temperatures, you can still see the uh, potential there in the eastern Pacific, although it is waning a little bit. Still 30 degree waters though off the coast of Mexico, so if we look for some close to home action, we could see something still big towards the end of the season, 
uh, like we often see in October and sometimes November. In the Atlantic though, that very low latitude system is over 28 to 30 degrees Celsius waters and will remain that way all the way through until it's landfall likely in Nicaragua or Honduras. Elsewhere pretty warm in the Atlantic, North Indian Ocean. Uh, 30 degrees plus along the coast of India, down where that storm is, uh, looks like it's hovering at about 28, maybe a little bit less than that in its current location, I think it's around 11 south. And in the western Pacific, piping hot waters there, 30 degrees plus, uh, mainly in the southern part of the Philippine Sea and also off the western coast of Luzon, where that system will end up tracking the one that we've marked. It will be around 28, 29 and pushing 30 later on in its life potentially. Obviously depends on which way it goes, which we'll assess on the models in a moment. Let's look at the sea surface temperature anomalies again and look again at the uh, eastern Pacific there, the La Nina effect in full swing and extremely cold uh, temperature anomalies there. But in general, it is above average in the tropical zones, eastern Pacific though struggling. The Atlantic is a little bit cooler in the high latitudes now off the coast of Florida and the places that Ian affected basically, but elsewhere still very hot. Look at the Caribbean there, very warm oceanic heat content values. Uh, but there is a big dip there in the southern Caribbean, which is intriguing. And that just so happens to be where 13L is going. Eastern Pacific, low values pretty much all along in the Western Pacific there once again. We're looking at pretty high values, although it is uh, just uh, off the boil slightly in the last uh, few days. So let's take a look at the expectations for our storms then. And this is what the GFS is showing for 13L. Uh, expecting a strong tropical storm and possibly a hurricane to make landfall probably in northern Nicaragua and then its remnants will continue through towards Belize and over Mexico um, but it's looking like uh, it's going to be especially where after it moves inland going to be very much a rainmaker rather than a windstorm except for the area of course where it makes landfall so here's the Western Pacific and this potential area of interest which is just starting to get a little bit more support by some of the other models which is why it has been marked and towards the end of that five day period it starts to appear uh, and there it is just about becoming a tropical, well no not quite uh, but you can see it just taking shape there towards the end of that loop over the northern Mariana Islands uh, and proceeds generally towards the northwest. So something to watch out for there and in the southern hemisphere this tropical storm 3s whether it's tropical storm or not at the moment i'm not sure but satellite estimates certainly have it at a decent uh, amount of wind and you can see it there persisting for a little bit longer uh, and in a few days it will start to lose its northern uh, gale force wind field and uh, really start to uh, get sucked up in a trough and become a uh, an expanding eventually remnant and what's left of it will slowly uh, move towards the west. Alright let's take a look at some of these rainfall expectations from tropical potential tropical cyclone 13 and you can see it here all of these red zones that are encroaching in inland there across uh, Nicaragua, uh, Honduras, Guatemala, Belize, Mexico and on the south side as well in the Pacific from some of its energy uh, looking at very high rain estimates possibly up to around 12 or to 15 inches in some inland locations uh, and if it was 15 inches that would be nearly 400 millimeters uh, 10 inches quite commonplace in a lot of those areas that's 250 millimeters and into the Bay of Campeche there as well on the coast of Veracruz in Mexico some high amounts there just off the coast from this storm's remnant energy You'll also note on the south side there, a little pink area from a new tropical cyclone potentially as well, which we also looked at. Um, or we are looking at right now actually, because here it is. This is what happens in the 5 to 10 day period, and that is what causes all of that rain that we saw on that big pink splodge. Um, a system that really doesn't want to move anywhere in the longer range, that's day 5 to 10. Some of it is energy from 13L, which you can see just its remnants moving into the Bay of Campeche there. Uh, but this system uh, stays around that whole area, the uh, Gulf of, uh, I forget the name of it now, or it's difficult to pronounce, but I can't remember its full name. 
Tehuantepec, I think it is. And in the Western Pacific, there is this uh, potential typhoon and actually three systems that appear there in that uh, longer range, day five to 10. Uh, and look what happens to the first one. We we'll try and track all of them here. One in the South China Sea that develops and uh, moves into uh, Vietnam. The second one, which is the one we're currently already tracking. And the third one, which forms near the Mariana Islands, moves off towards the northeast. The middle one, which is the one we're watching at the moment, possibly becoming a typhoon as it turns around near Okinawa. Anyway, you can scan the barcode and uh, take a look at our Force 13 merch store now that all we've, now we've gone through all the serious stuff from this update. And check out our Still Waiting for Hone t-shirts as well as our individual and full season animation requests. You can uh, take a look at those too. So into the Silly Range, another area of interest develops out of that next system's energy, which is partially from 13L, and off it goes. It's moving off towards the west and picks up speed uh, and becomes a hurricane there as it moves out towards the, well, just out to sea, um, and a decent looking hurricane towards the later dates of October. So uh, certainly a chance for another storm and another extension to the Eastern Pacific naming list so far. Uh, which has certainly, I think, outperformed from most people's perspectives. Check out the Western Pacific for this same period as well, and look what happens to that system. It does a U-E, a U-turn, back towards uh, the Mariana Islands, and what's this? It turns again towards the southwest and redevelops into a tropical storm, and it's just about to hit Luzon at the end of that 16-day period. It's the zigzag. That would be one of the strangest typhoon tracks, or you know any tropical cyclone track in the western pacific that i've seen it reminds me of some of the old 1930s ones that i was digging up a uh, really crazy track if that was to verify i doubt it will indian ocean something to look at for the long range but there's no um credence to this at all yet but a big bad cyclone there becoming a major hit for the east coast of india the odisha province probably into west bengal there around what was that the 20th of october roughly uh, so it's 13 days out it's a long way but that could be something that we watch out for later on the indian ocean is known for hits like this occurring at this time of year so keep your eyes on that one well then on this day we look back at october 7th 2019 and i'm sure many of us will still remember hagibis which was uh, extremely explosive intensification on this day to reach a Category 5 peak. Uh, people uh, still disagree exactly how strong it might have been. 185, 190, uh, possibly 190, I think is what I still have it as on my personal analysis. But a Category 5 nonetheless, and that image, I think you'll get no disagreement from anywhere, is an exquisite pinhole eye with extremely good symmetry around that central core. Well then back to today and the next name in the Atlantic is Julia and we could be seeing that very shortly. In the Eastern Pacific it's Roslyn and in the Central Pacific we are still waiting for Hone. Could be our 70 second storm but I highly doubt that. In the uh, Western Pacific, the next name now is Sonka. We could be seeing that soon. In the North Indian Ocean, Sitrang. We've been waiting quite a while for that one as well now, but I think we will get it at some point in the late part of this year. It's just odds are we will see something there. And in the Southern Hemisphere, next up is Darien in the Australian region, Southwest Indian Ocean, Balita, if the Mateo France noticed this current storm. And in the South Pacific, next up there is Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night if we're not live. <laughs>